All right, I officially cave. I am I am done trying to ignore the Astros. I was not going to make a video on this, but I have been spammed for the last 24 hours to please cover this. Fuzzy, do this. Fuzzy, do that. Fuzz, please, can you react to this? So what we're going to do today is we will be reacting to a brand new report from this guy named Tony Adams. I want to go ahead and give him all the credit because he looked at over 8,200 Major League Baseball pitches. He's an Astros fan, so I want to tip my cap to him as well. He wanted to see just how bad his team was in regards to cheating. So if we take a look at his first tweet, this one says Astros trash can bangs by date. And if you want to go ahead and go to his website, you're more than welcome to. But here is the graph right here. 1,400 bangs out of 1,800 pitches. This one dates all the way back from 2017. So if you see over here, these are the amount of bangs and these are the games. So they started off like, hey, we're gonna try it a couple different times. We're gonna see if it works. And also, I'm gonna look out for anything that involves CLE. That is the Cleveland Indians. And as you guys can see, they were banging maybe once or twice up against the Indians. Maybe Corey Kluber was on the mound or Shane Bieber. Who knows who was on the mound? But then you see, starting March 28th, they got up to about 28-ish bangs in one single game and this is where I really thought this was funny is if you go all the way over here to July 14th the second highest from any single game of this study from my man's over here they faced the Minnesota Twins and who pitched in that game Phil Hughes but he decided to hop on the magic school bus ride that we are all on right now in regards to hating on the Astros and not really hating on them just making fun of them for the time being because they at least deserve it right now uh, they had nearly 50 bangs in a single game and I don't know what was happening on August 4th there was almost 60 bangs in a single game how are you not if you're a Blue Jays pitcher how do you not notice 60 individual bangs on pitches coming in. Now, one thing I do want to know as well is these are the bangs that were heard. Usually, if a bang was not heard, it was because a fastball was coming. So there might have been almost 60 bangs, but they still knew what pitch was coming even if there wasn't a bang because 99% of the time, that indicated a fastball. So it's it's insane to me how many times they decided to use them over the course of a couple different months. So from May to about September, how many is that? May, June, July, August, September, five months pretty much every single home game aside from Texas and then this August 19th game against Oakland. But even then they did it about 20-ish times. And then I don't know why, uh, something about the Angels, I don't know why they just decided to not use them. Uh, maybe because it was the final games of the season, they wanted to go into the playoffs looking pretty. But this first one, ooh, ooh. So 1,143 bangs out of 8,274 pitches. So I don't know the math on that one. 1,143 divided by 8,274. It's about Okay, so about 14% of the pitches were known by the Houston Astros over the course of these couple games. Now again, that is not including how fastballs came without a bang. Probably was more than 14% at this point, but this was just the first talking point that I did want to address. This one really got the ball rolling, so there is bullet point number one. This one says Astros trash can bangs by player. So now, now that we know how many times they bang per game, we're going to see who benefited from it the most. So it looks like on this side, this reminds me of when I used to take calculus and what was it, economics? I do not like these graphs. It reminds me of horrible times. But we have total bangs on the left side and then total pitches that they saw. So it looks like Jose Altuve saw a lot of pitches, but he didn't get a lot of bangs. So you do not want to be up in this region along with George Springer, Bregman, Carlos Beltran, Marvin Gonzalez, Yuli Gurriel. So it looks like Jose Altuve didn't get a lot of bangs. George Springer, oh my gosh. So George Springer got a lot of them. He got a ton of pitches and he got a lot of bangs. But at this point, Marvin Gonzalez looks like he got the... Ooh, he got the special treatment. I just don't know. How did they expect to get away with this? How on earth do you bang that many times on a trash can? It's so barbaric. Carlos Beltran, Bregman. Uh, okay, so that's the graph right there. If you guys want to take a look, go for it. So now we're going to get into the little itty bitty details of the players themselves. Jose Altuve trash can bangs versus team total. He had 24 bangs on 866 pitches for a whopping 2.8% of the bangs going to Jose Altuve. So he didn't have them every single game. As you can see, the biggest one 
against the Toronto Blue Jays, he didn't have a single bang. He had one against the uh, Tampa Bay Rays. And for the most part, it looks like Jose Altuve was pretty clean. Now again, the caveat, the asterisk, does he know that a fastball is coming? So 2.8 for Jose Altuve. George Springer, he gets up there in the 14.9%. And it looks like most of them came against teams that were going up against in the playoffs, except for the Baltimore Orioles. You have the A's, you have the Diamondbacks, the Nationals, the Mets. So the Mariners doesn't really count because they're not really a good team. Same with the Chicago White Sox. But as you can see, almost 15% went to George Springer. Bregman. He just topped George Springer with a 16.6% bang rate. <laughs> I never thought I would have said that unless Bregman got caught doing some weird stuff on the internet. Um, I'm not going to give the website, but you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Looks like he had about 133 bangs out of 800 pitches. That is quite a lot, so more than an eighth is going to Bregman. Then we have Carlos Correa with 16.3%. There was a stretch from July to August where he did not receive any bangs. And then from May to about July, July 19th is my birthday. So no bangs on his birthday. I, I, I had a different bang, but I'm not going to get into that. Here we go. <laughs> I am so bad. But I mean, for the most part, the trend has been that every single player really aside from Jose Altuve got a significant boost in their stats due to about 20% of bangs going to these individual players. So Marvin Gonzalez, he got up to an 18.9%. So let's just give it a nice round number of 19%. He only saw 766 pitches at home and 147 of them were banged on. So... Just, I, I can't, I cannot believe that this actually happened. Yuli Gurriel is at 17.9. Jake Marisnik was at 22.8. Jake Marisnik is awful at hitting, so I can see this making a lot of sense. Uh, he got about 23% of the bangs. And then we have Evan Gaddis at 16.6. Brian McCann at 8.9. Josh Reddick at 3.9. And they came probably towards the end of the season. Maybe he needed some boost to his stats. See, all of the players. So you can see all of them at one glance right now. These were the amount of pitches and these were the bangs. So out of 776 pitches, pretty much 19% of it was banged on from Marvin Gonzalez. So he leads the pack quite a lot, or actually Jake Marisnik at 22. Who is this? Tyler White at 26.4%. JD Davis, who is now a member of the New York Mets, he has 28.6%, which actually is crazy. JD Davis is on the New York Mets and they just fired Carlos Beltran. So technically you had two guys on the team that were benefiting from this. Cameron Mabin got about 23%, so he knew what was going on. And then look at this, Tony Kemp. They know that he is so bad at hitting. Even if they bang on trash cans, nothing is going to come of it. So this is some pretty crazy stuff. That's pretty much all that you can see that Mike Fultonewicz, I, I, I hope I said his last name right, he got in on the action um, because Andy said, correct me if I'm wrong, but not hearing a bang, also let the batters know what's coming if you're at the plate and you are engaged in this type of cheating. He says, great point, banging usually meant off speed, so no banging equals fastball. Still good data. This is absolutely insane, so I do want to give him all of the credit in the world. Tony Adams, uh, at Adams underscore at, so that's him right here. I'm going to go ahead and like it and retweet it because this is absolutely crazy. So if you guys want to dig more into this yourself, please go ahead, go download a Twitter because this is where all of the breaking news stuff happens. Maybe you just don't want to cloud your mind with all this gunk. I completely understand, but... I mean, he did this at 5.07 a.m. That's Pacific Standard Time, so he was probably doing this all night. He decided to really just... Uh, he wanted to drop the hammer and he did it on his own team. So I'm going to go ahead and tip my cap one more time. And I want you guys to let me know in the comment section down below. What should happen to the Astros players? Because the debate has been, why are these players given immunity? Yes, they were honest with Robert Manfred and they chose to snitch on themselves. And in return, they were not punished. But considering they had pretty much 1,143 pitches that were known. That is insane right there. There was also a stat. I'm going to try and find it right now. Another player was affected. I can't remember his name, but he played in a game. I think it was this one right here or this, this, yeah, this one right here on August 4th for the Blue Jays. I'll try and find the stat so I can throw it up there right now. It was his final game ever. Remember, these are all home games. He gave up like six or seven runs, something like that. And then within a week or two, he was retired. He was out of the game of baseball. And for the most part, it's probably because the Blue Jays thought this dude cannot pitch a lick. But unfortunately though, he was a victim of the Astros banging on trash cans. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you did enjoy and learn something new. I, I don't mean to just throw all this stuff at you. And again, I like Alex Bregman. I like Jose Altuve. And also Jose Altuve actually looks a little bit better because he only had banging on 3% of his pitches. So he didn't really need it in 2017. But I like Bregman. I like Jose Altuve. I was a big fan of Verlander and Garrett Cole and even Zach Greinke. So the fact that this happened, it really does suck. 
For the game of baseball, we have a brand new villain. The Yankees are no longer the team that everyone wants to fail. A lot of people are gonna watch in 2020 to see if the Astros can repeat. But thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, slap a like on this one and subscribe, and I'll catch you all in the next one. This was crazy. This is the same kind of person that goes on to Quizlet and fills out the entire study guide for all the people that come after. So props to this man. You are one of the reasons why I passed college. The same type of person. Bless you, sir. I hope you have uh, fine riches very soon. See you guys. Peace out.